Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about lit code question number nine, palindrome number. This video is part of a much larger series on lit codes questions and answers, where we discuss the question, discover the solutions, uh, more than one solution sometimes, and look at the algorithm, its complexity in terms of speed and memory. So if you're giving an interview, this would be a great video for you. So let's get started. But before we do, uh, please subscribe to this channel because I'm going to release lots of cool videos like this in this series. So you don't want to miss out. So please subscribe so you can assume you don't have to find my channel actually. Say, hey, uh, I know this cool video this guy wrote. Um, I want to look at other videos, but I can't find this channel, right? So if you subscribe it, this would definitely help. Also click on a bell icon so you get some notification next time I release another lit code video. Uh, okay. So how do I find this question? If you go to the litcode.com and click on the problems, uh, this is the ninth question, palindrome number, right? Again, it might change later on, but right now it's number nine. It's an easy question according to litcode, but remember the easy, hard and medium, it depends on where you are, which level you are. Uh, you will get comfortable and one point, you know, things would start to look very easy. And that's the stage you want to be Okay, so let's look at the now uh, the companies that ask these questions list here at the bottom last six months Google Bloomberg Microsoft Facebook all the good companies are asking these questions uh, if you look at uh, one or two years ago not so good companies Yahoo Oracle SEP but this is getting really popular nowadays which means that if you are interviewing with any company the probability of this question coming to your interview is very high and if it does you get lucky and you get a job all right so what is the question uh given an int integer return true if x is a palindrome integer now not everybody know what palindrome is so let's understand this an integer is palindrome when it reads same backward as forward 121 and if you reverse it you'll get 121 as well. So this is a palindrome, but if you reverse 123, it will give you 321, which is not 123. So it's not a palindrome. So as you can see, all you have to do is reverse the number. If it matches the original number, then it's a palindrome. Otherwise it's not. Now it looks easier, but just wait a minute. It can get a little trickier and especially because there's two constraints. So let's look at it at the bottom. The first constraint is the number has to be between this range. So if it's, let's say, 2 days to 32, uh, then you have to return false. That's the first constraint. And the second constraint is you have to do this without converting integer into string. And this is very important because if you have a string, there is a prebuilt function that can convert, you know, return uh, the reverse string. But if you have a number, there is no such function. That's where the complexity uh, becomes, right? A lot of people don't know how to do it. All right, so first thing you want to do is in an interview is just write down all the test cases. So what happens is once you write your solution, you want to go through all the test cases and make sure that they all work. So you can certify your result. 121 would return what? True. 123 would obviously return false that we already know. Minus 121 would return also false. And let's say if I have a, that corner case, which is two days to 32, this would also return false. So we need to cover only these test cases to certify. Now let's look at the algorithm. So again, if it's if it's negative or if it's uh, greater than two days to 32, then we return false. So which is pretty simple. So I'm not going to cover this here. We need to figure out how to return a number, how to reverse a number. Now, last video, I actually uh, created an algorithm to reverse a number, which is a lit code number seven, how to reverse a number, uh, where I use a diff different algorithm. But here I'm gonna use a simpler one. So if you check out that one, uh, check out this one, I'll provide a link at the uh, at the end of the video so you can compare and you know use whichever is comfortable to you. I take any number, let's say 123, right? If I wanna reverse it, if I can sim somehow split the last number, to split that last number, I can use something like this console log and I can take 123 find a remainder dividing by 10 I would get 3 right 
So this is how I get the, the last number. What about the rest of the number, uh, 12, right? If I wanna get that one, then there's another trick. If I divide 123 by 10, I will get 12 point something. And if I parse int, so let's say parse and then 123 divided by 10, I'll get three and 12. So I was able to now split this into two, right? So I would get three as a reverse number. Then what I would do, the remaining number 112, I would split two again, but this time, whichever the, the remaining number was, re reverse number was, so I would just say multiply by 10, and then add the new number that I found, which is two. So this one would give me 32. And again, the last number now left is one. So what I would do is the reverse number that I got, 32, I'll again multiply by 10, uh, and the plus the last number, right? So this would give me 321. And this is the algorithm actually. So let's uh, write our function. So function is palindrome and then pass number. This will run thing but return true or false. If I console log is palindrome and pass, let's say minus 121, I should get false, right? So let's cover those two edge cases, which is pretty simple. If uh, a number is less than zero or a number is greater than two days to uh, 32, then return false. We need to reverse a number and compare. For that, I would need uh, two things, right? I would need to preserve this number. So I'm gonna do is uh, const n equal to number. So I preserve the number so I can compare last the reverse number, right? I would also get the reverse number and let's set it to zero. Let's write a while loop so we can just go through each number by one, okay? So let's have a while loop while our number is greater than zero. Let's split the number. So we already have this, let's call it digit. So let digit equal to this, where this would be the number, right? So in this case, we'll get three as a digit, which is cool. Now, the reverse number would be the previous reverse number multiplied by 10 plus the digit, right? So this will be zero plus three initially, right? For the next round, it's gonna be 30 plus two, and then 30, 320 plus one, right? Now we also need to set the number to this, um, this number, number divided by 10. So at the end, I would get this number reverse. And if the reverse number is equal to the number n, which we preserved previously, then we have return true else false. All right, now let's go through all the test cases. So we're just gonna try 121. Ah, I need to write this one before here, before I copy, because I said if n equal to zero and all that stuff, so that was a mistake. So I get true for 120, 121. What about 123? I get false. And we already looked at the minus, so we don't have to worry about it. One last test case we can do 10 would be also false, right? So we are getting false. So this is a simplest algorithm. I'll provide a link also in the description so you can check it out. All right, so now that we understood the algorithm, what about the complexity? You always wanna describe the complexity. Now in terms of number, we have an uh, integer which is not gonna be more than uh, what, uh, a couple of million, right? which means complexity doesn't really matter much. But if you were to explain this, um, how we're gonna do this, we are actually going number by number, splitting. So we are visiting every number once, which means the complexity of this would be O of N, where N is nothing but the length of the number. So it's a linear complexity. Also, let's look at the uh, how this algorithm does against all other algorithms. So. If I go and click on that algorithm, other people have also written this algorithm 
and this is the curve. And if you look at uh, the algorithm that I just submitted, it is 99.54% of the JavaScript solution. So which is, it beats basically, which is pretty good. So if it's greater than the bell curve here, if it's less than this, then it's a pretty good algorithm. If you're on the other side of it, then you need to worry about, okay, uh, now I need to improve it. So this is pretty good. I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe and provide a nice comment. You can follow me on the Facebook. I have this uh, group where you can ask questions and find answers. You can also follow my other channel. I have a YouTube uh, TechSaith channel, which is actually my main channel. This is my sub channel. So you can follow me there as well. And if you want to get trained, let's say if you're giving interview and um, you want to have like a formal education in terms of how to give interviews, want to get trained on JavaScript or in algorithm and data structure, starting to create uh, smaller groups for teaching that. So you can join this Discord and I can give, share some format on that as well. Uh, and I'll provide also the information in the description. Thank you.